week of a man, a very prominent man. You would know his name if I called it. A story was told that he stepped in the pulpit and he made an announcement to the congregation, I have prayed and asked God not to anoint me. He had some things he wanted to say. <laughs> That's very dangerous ground, isn't it? You don't need to hear nothing I've got to say. Probably most of all, most of, all of you sitting out there could tell me some things. But we need to hear from God. In the 11th chapter of Daniel, I want us to be reminded today that we are living in an appointed time. Do you believe that? Do you believe God's, the hand on God's time, on the, God's clock is just ticking away and nobody knows what's going on? God really don't know where, where, where the world is or what's going on. Do you believe that? No. But we are in an appointed time. God knows exactly where we're at. <laughs> Every day the sun rises, it's no surprise to God. Every day a life is snuffed out here in this world, it's no surprise to God. But we are living in the day of an appointed time. And most importantly, the days that lie ahead of us is in an appointed time of God Almighty. In the 11th chapter of Daniel, this chapter is said to be a summary of around 200 years of wars between Egypt and Syria. Prophesied some 200 years beforehand, Daniel mentions particular events including kings of that era. Then his prophecy crosses over to a time yet to come and a king yet to be seen on this earth. You praying for me today? You praying for the word of God? Let's pick up the story here or the prophecy, if you will, in verse 27. Part of this prophecy was a near prophecy that was about to take place some 200 years in the future that now we look back and see the prophecy of Daniel and who and what it included. And we have history that it has taken place already. But part of this prophecy points to a time in mine and your day. And the day yet to come. Beginning in verse 27, it says, And both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table. But it shall not prosper, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. But yet the end shall be at a time appointed. Listen, you and I are living in a day that is a very serious time. A lot of things are taking place that I'm not sure any of us really truly see the fulfillment of of all the prophecy that's taking place here today over the past few days that has taken place in few weeks and, and the days just ahead, all that's going on in the world. I'm not sure any of us really have a full understanding of what is taking place, but I want us to know this. There is an appointed time. Then shall he return into his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits and return to his own land. God help me today. Yes. 
The enemy of your soul and my soul, Satan, Lucifer, has always hated the holy covenant of God and has always come against the covenant and will continue to come against the covenant. Why? Because the covenant between God and his people make a distinction of who God is and who his people are. Right? It distinguishes guidelines. <laughs> it distinguishes the will of God. It distinguishes promises that's given to you and I if we will follow God. The covenant of God will bring strength in your life. God said he wanted to be your God. He wants you to be his people. Right? This is his heart's desire. Amen. You shall call me your God. I shall call you my people. Amen. Right? And you see, Satan hates that covenant. He hates the covenant of mercy and grace, the new covenant that Jesus Christ brought on the scene to redeem all of mankind back to the Father, the original relationship with God Almighty. He hates that. Amen. If you remember, there was two boys one time. One was Jacob, one was Saul, uh, Esau. Esau had a birthright coming to him. He had promises that were uh, his, right. rightfully, legally his, right? right? But, you see, he counted the birthright of no value. And he sold out his own birthright to his brother Jacob. Right? And the Bible says he despised his birthright. And then it goes on to say he hated who? Jacob. <laughs> right? And, and all of this business about the birthright and ja now Jacob's rights. And you see, Esau began to hate that. He despised it. He, and he desired to kill Jacob. Well, we can see that so plainly, can't we? But we need to be reminded of something today. The enemy of your soul... He hates the holy covenant of God and mankind. And he would desire, most of all, to destroy that. Right? At the time appointed, he shall return and come to with the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. For the ships of Chittim shall come against him, Therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. Uh-oh. God help us. You see, not only does Satan hate the holy covenant of God, he is looking for someone to join with him to have an intelligence with. That means an allowance or camaraderie with them that forsake the holy covenant of God. Now, We must be very careful 
how we handle the holy covenant of God. If we forsake it or count it as very little value, you see, Satan will move in and he is looking for someone that will forsake the covenant altogether, form a new covenant with him, his covenant of lies, hypocrisy, and customs of the heathen. That's what his aim is. Some of you are a little older than me. Some of you not quite as old. But I don't know if you remember. But as a young boy, growing up there in my hometown, I remember we'd go to town. and I, re- I remember seeing a poster that was posted in windows, in magazines, on signposts. A lot of places, basically anywhere you went, you might see this poster. It was a picture of an old man in a red, white, and blue suit and a a top hat. His name, Uncle Sam. Any of y'all remember that? Brother Nick, I remember as a young boy seeing that poster, and sometimes it would bring a fear over me. Because he, the painter, his eyes were, there wasn't no doubt who he was talking to. I knew he was talking to Clint Pulliam every time I looked at that. He's looking you straight in the eye. He had a serious look on his face. And he always did like that. Y'all remember seeing it? And what did the poster say? I want you. <laughs> I want you. For the U.S. Army. When this thought come to my mind, I went online, I pulled it up just to see the picture again. Now you see it, he's got a mask on and says, I want you to social distance. (laughs) I want you to wear a mask. But as a young boy, I knew that one day I would become an age I'd heard it all my life. And just before I turned 18, my dad began to tell me, son, you're going to have to go down to the post office and register. And I thought, well, I'm thankful we ain't in war right now. But you see, I remembered all my life of seeing that old man looking at me and saying, I want you, boy. Well, I want to tell you something. Today, The devil is looking at every one of you and he's saying, I want you. I'm looking for you. Don't matter how old you are, how young you are, how feeble you are, I want you. What does he want? He wants you to forsake the holy covenant of God And join with him against God Almighty. You better believe he does. He wants you to join his covenant, his army, his lies, his hypocrisy. Right? God help us to remain true and faithful to God and enjoy the blessings of God. Wonderful testimony this morning. Don't it feel good to have the blessings of God on your life? Devil's all through with you. He don't want you no more. Oh, yes, he does. He still wants you. He'll still take you. In verse 31, it says, And the arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. The devil is looking for all who will to join him in arms. Not only his arms, but the arms of the deserters of the covenant. Uh Uh-oh. Do y'all remember 
Brother Nick, you mind helping me out a minute? Do y'all remember? You may not. Come on up here, please. Caleb, help me, please. Come right here. When I was a young boy in school, we'd go out on the playground, we'd play a little game. Go right up there and stand, Caleb. Face us. It was called Red Rover. Anybody ever played Red Rover? I found out the other day, a lot of schools has banded that because it's too violent for children. <laughs> but listen, when you play, you know how to play? Uh, a little, kind of. Okay, you're going to learn. <laughs> Two teams. The, 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 the point was, or, or the goal was for one team to defeat the other. How did they do that? They joined arms. That's how you play Red Rover. You join arms and you say, Red Rover, Red Rover, send Caleb right over. Come and try to break through our arms. Don't let him break through, bro. Oh, son, you got to run hard to do that. <laughs> and when he couldn't break through, that team would take him and he would join arms with them. Right? And they would say, Red Rover, Red Rover, send someone else over until there was no one left standing. The devil is looking for all that he can to join arms with him <laughs> against the holy covenant of God until he can say, Red Rover, Red Rover, game all over. Thank y'all. You see, he's looking for all to join arms with him. Why does he hate the covenant, the holy covenant of God? As he saw... You see, the devil was once in heaven, right? And he rose up, esteemed himself against God Almighty. Wrong move. Bad move. Jesus said, I beheld him fall from heaven as a lightning bolt. <laughs> and now he hates God in all who worship God. But they will pollute or destroy the pure worship of the holy God. Pollute and destroy the holy way of living, thereby by destroying the holy covenant with God. In verse 32, it says, And such as do wickedly I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. Now I want us to understand who it is we're talking about. You see, Daniel's prophecy here. You need to pray and ask God, help me understand this. <laughs> oh, it's a whole lot in this little, one little chapter right here. The book of Daniel ties with the book of Revelation and you almost have to have it as a key to understand revelations. And there's so much of this prophecy that is, we're standing on the threshold of it taking place, and we need the understanding of it. But who is it here in verse 32 that we're talking about? He shall corrupt by flatteries. This is no other than the Antichrist himself. <laughs> right? In chapter 7 and verse 8, Daniel refers to him as the little horn. In chapter 9 and verse 26, he refers to him as the prince. Right? Let's continue reading on here in 11 and 30. Start with me in 36. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished for that that is determined shall be done. Well, let's read that again. For that that is determined shall be done. We're living in an appointed time. It, it, it's going to take place. <laughs> there ain't no if, and, and buts about it. It will God's word will be fulfilled. 
Right. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in this estate shall he honor the God of forces, and of God and of a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. This shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. And the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. He shall enter also into the glorious land and many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at, the, at his steps. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. And he shall plant the tabernacle of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. And at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was seen. There was a never since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. Amen. Can you say amen to the reading of God's word? What are you saying, Brother Pulliam? There's an appointed time. We're living in an appointed time. The enemy of your soul is about to break through on this earth like you've never seen before. God help us. God help us. God help us. Look with me in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Beginning in verse 2, I'm reading a lot of scriptures this morning. I have a lot of scriptures still yet to read. I pray that you won't get bored, but pay attention, read along, and pray that the Lord would help us and tell us something today. 2 Thessalonians chapter uh, 2, verse 3 through 12. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. We are living in an appointed time. Amen. Amen. Listen, (laughs) don't be surprised any day now if you don't see and recognize the Antichrist being revealed. Who opposes and exalteth himself above all, above all. Above all that is called God. All that is worshipped. So that he as God. Sitteth in the temple of God. Showing himself that he is God. Uh oh. You see he hates the holy covenant of God. (laughs) He wants to be God. He wants to destroy God and all who worship God. He wants to be God and he wants you to worship him. That's his goal. Remember yet not that when I was with you, I told you these things. And now you know with, with, now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Uh Oh, 
<laughs> now, it sounds like some deception going on, right? Listen, don't let the enemy of your soul destroy the holy covenant of God in your life. Your fellowship with God Almighty where the Spirit leads and directs and you follow. Don't let that happen. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You see, the Antichrist is going to specialize in this. Right? Deception and lies. Right? And causing you to count the holy covenant of God worthless. And forsaking it. And join arms with him against God. Hmm. Daniel knew what he was talking about, didn't he? I'm not going to read it all for the sake of time, but in Revelations chapter 13, if you're taking notes, it'd be a good chapter for you to go home and read the whole chapter. It tells us a lot about what's fixing to take place. Back to Daniel 11 and 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. Huh. Who are we talking about? The Antichrist. Listen. Don't be flattered by the devil. <laughs> you ever had the devil to brag on you? Speak highly of you? You knew the whole time he was patting you on the back? Huh? He's good at that. He's good at lifting you up, making you feel good about yourself. Flattering you. If he sees one little ray of hope in your life, that you have forsaken the covenant of God in some kind of way in your life, that fellowship there is broken, he's going to step right up and begin to tell you what a good fellow you are. Don't allow that. When Daniel and... Uh, God's people was taken into captive and Daniel and Hebrew boys, you know, remember where I'm going now? Right? They, Daniel and uh, these three Hebrew boys, they would show special attention. Right? Why? Because the king saw something in their life that we can use him. What? He looked right at them and said, I want you. <laughs> I want you. I want you for. Right? And he made those over the captives there who ministered to them, fed them, or whatever. He appointed. He didn't just say, Daniel, if you'd like him, you know, you're welcome to some of my food. It's better food. No, he appointed them to have daily provision, a portion of the king's meat. <laughs> Listen, don't be wound in by Satan in this world and all that he has to offer you. All he's doing is winding you in. He's wanting to lock arms with you against God. But the Bible says Daniel purposed in his heart not to defile himself of the king's meat. Flatteries. Now, all of this big picture that I've tried to paint here, I hope you see it. But verse 32 says, this is what brought it all to my mind. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. <laughs> but the people. You see, there's people within a people. <laughs> <laughs> but the people, the ones who know their God, 
No doubt there were many of the captives. If they had been in Daniel's shoes, they would have said, bring it on, king. I'll take the chicken and the collard greens and the mashed potatoes and the cornbread and I'll bring it on. Daniel said, I'll not defile myself. (laughs) Why? He was part of the people who knew his God. He was strong in his faith. Right? But the people who know their God shall be strong. You need strength. I need strength to stand against the Antichrist. (laughs) To stand against the beast. You need strength. (laughs) Where does that strength come from? Knowing God. It says, and they shall do exploits. Listen. God help us not to be confused about what this means. Sometimes I think we're more uh, concerned about how many blinded eyes we open. (laughs) You know, how many deaf ears we open. All of this is great. That's not necessarily exploits. There's more to exploits than just making a show before this world and saying, we're the church of God. See this? We need to be careful about believers following signs. The signs are to follow the believers. So what do we need to be concerned about? Knowing your God. Knowing your God. And being strong in the faith of your God. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The right knowledge of God, the true worship of God, is the strength of the soul. That is the strength of the soul. Having a clear knowledge and understanding of who God is. What God is. And worshiping Him. In the Spirit. Somewhere in here it says God seeketh such to to do that. I believe. No. You must worship God in spirit and truth. For the Lord seeketh such. This is our strength of the soul. Knowing God will build our strength of our faith and our dedication of our life before God. Then we can do exploits. So many people want to get the cart before the horse. (laughs) You know? We can't afford to be like those at Mars Hill. Oh, they were worshiping. <laughs> There's a bunch of them there. Paul passed by and saw they was all worshiping, right? But they had a big sign out there on their altar. Didn't say to, we're worshiping because we know the Lord God Almighty, Jehovah. No, it said, to the unknown God. Ain't that a shame? What, what, what a sad What a sad sign to post out here. We we worship the unknown God. Paul said, let me tell you about Him. It's in Him that we live and move and have our being. We breathe. It's all because of Him. You see, they were worshiping, but they ignorantly worshiped God. You're not going to get anywhere ignorantly worshiping God. I thought, you know, I think there's, I think there's ten of us here today. For all of y'all out there in video land that don't know how many's here, it's ten of us. <laughs> but listen, you can head in any direction from this little church right here, and in just a matter of a few minutes, you will pass a congregation of hundreds. What are they doing? 
Oh, they're there in worship this morning. They got bands. They got flags. They got praise teams. But I want to tell you something that we need to be aware of. Brother Pullman, are you preaching against them people? No, I'm sure many of them are other sheep. But let me tell you, whether we're there or whether we're here, the Word of God says, but the people who know their God. Just because you show up to church on Sunday morning and a big praise team and a bus sitting outside don't mean you know who you're singing about. <laughs> Amen. They were worshiping ignorantly. Paul said that God once winked at this ignorance. Right? But not anymore. Why? Because there's a holy covenant of God in place. Jesus Christ, His Son, has come and instituted the New Testament. The sacrifice has been made. Hmm. You better know who you worship now. (laughs) You better know. We must know him. Jeremiah 9 and 24. I'm trying to hurry. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. (laughs) You want to glory in something? Tell somebody, look, every day I'm getting a new revelation of who God is. Yes. <laughs> let, him, let him glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me that I am the Lord, which exercise, listen, loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. You see, So many today, they just want to know a little bit about God, His loving kindness. (laughs) That's all. Well, God says He exercises judgment and righteousness also. We need to know God. (laughs) Hosea 6 and 3. Then shall we know If we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. God help us to know God. We we need to, we need to go on with God. What are you saying? We haven't faced the Antichrist yet. No, it's God has brought me to here today. I'm thankful that I know him and what I know about him. But I understand I'm going to have to know more (laughs) and more and more and more of God to face the enemy of my my soul that is coming against me tomorrow. (laughs) Why? Because what I proclaim, he hates. Huh? God help us. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. You remember the church at Philadelphia? We studied about them over the past couple of services, our BTI services. The church at Philadelphia, remember? The Bible says they had little strength. Listen, (laughs) they were fighting a battle. Now, it don't take me very long. I feel like right now I've been in the ring with Muhammad Ali up here already in my body. It don't take long for me to give out. (laughs) Ask him boys I work with. But listen, they had little strength. No doubt, physically, Mentally, emotionally, no doubt they were worn out. You ever had the devil just wear you out? 
but they only had a little strength. But where did this little strength come from? <laughs> Knowing their God. <laughs> they knew, they knew that they knew that they knew their God. Jesus Christ, a wonderful witness to have in your corner. He said, thou hast kept thy word. <laughs> oh, Philadelphia. Thank God for it. You've kept the word. Amen. Amen. You've kept the word. You've not denied my name. Amen. Amen. What enabled them to do that? The strength yeah. of knowing their God. <laughs> In the face of the greatest opposition that exists, they knew their God. Well, I just lost it. To do exploits means to take action. <clears throat> Listen, there's, we're living in an appointed time that is right before us that action must be taken. We're going to find ourselves by this government, by this world, by society all around us. If we're not careful, it's going to back us right into a corner and there will be action taken. If you know your God and are strong in your faith, you will be forced to take action. Hmm, sort of scary, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I remember a little funny story. I'll share it with you later. I'm not going to share it now. In Hebrews chapter 11, in, my, in closing, verse 33, I want you to listen to this. We're going to read about some who knew their God. <laughs> We're going to read about some precious souls, Sister Sutton, that's included in this scripture, this holy scripture here for mine and your learning. We're going to read about them now. Why are they there? Because they knew their God. They were strong in their faith. Now let's, now let's read about some exploits. Right? Chapter 11, verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, <laughs> quenched the violence of fires, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness, what? Were made strong, <laughs> right? Waxed the valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies. Of the aliens. What? They didn't join arms with them? No. <laughs> no, they did great exploits. They were strong. They stood and they fought. Right? Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. That's still an exploit. <laughs> That's still an exploit. <laughs> right? that they might obtain a better resurrection. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sown asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. But that's still exploits. <laughs> <laughs> See, exploits don't necessarily mean you're doing something great and the whole world around here is going to praise you for it. No, not necessarily. Where were I? Where was I? And of whom the world was not worthy. <laughs> they wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. <laughs> Uh-oh. 
God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. I'm not even worthy that Clint Pulliam's name would even be included in the same book with them. But for you and I to make it, we're going to have to know the same God that they knew. We're going to have to have the same strength that they had. We're going to have to do the same exploits that they did. Fight against the enemy. I think of Polycarp. Oh, he didn't. He didn't do nothing that everybody was praising him and going on. What a wonderful <laughs> boy! You showed him Polycarp. No, he stood right there and they burned him at the stake. But he knew who God was. And as he stood there, some of his last words were, I've served him 80 some years. He ain't never done me no harm. That's exploits. Listen, we don't know. I've heard, I've heard it preached since I was a little bitty boy. Used to scare me to death to hear about what's coming on this earth. Now that little bitty boy is 56 years old. We know a lot. It's been given to us. But we better know one thing. We better know who our God is. We better be strong. We better be strong. We better be strong. Some of us are out of shape. Physically. <laughs> and, you know, I, I ain't never been a muscle man. But I've always been able to hold my own. <laughs> but sometimes lately, I feel like I can't hold my own anymore. But listen, spiritually, we better be strong. We better be stronger than ever. We better be stronger than ever. We better know God. He better be real to you. I said he better be real to you. Amen. If you will stand with us. I appreciate you listening this morning.